Alright, welcome back. So, in the last one we did the toggle switch. And now we are going to do the relay that will connect to that toggle switch. So, if you haven't watched the other one that I did before on this, we'll just do a quick recap. The 30 post that comes out of here, which the 30 is the blue wire on this one, that is to your load. Your 86, which is yellow in this case, that one goes to the switch. So that's the one we will actually be wiring in to this. I'll show you that in a second. The red, as with most automotive wiring, the red goes to the battery, a direct battery to the battery, and will be wired through a fusible link. These are the waterproof type ones, especially if they're mounted upside down in that kind of a location, so the water can't pool in. Although it is designed to make that more difficult, it can happen. So if at all possible, try and mount them upside down. It's just a little tip, it helps. So we will, in that case, these ones have to be uh, snipped because they come from the factory in a loop. So you can choose how much you will wire you want on either side. I like to go 50-50. Might be part of that OCD thing I was talking about before. But that's just the way I like to do it. That way if I want to use it later on for something, I can. It's not set in stone as it were. So while I'm doing the ends of these, I slip on the heat shrink at that time. That way if I get going on a roll or something like that and I forget what I'm doing and I've all or haven't done, done or haven't done, sorry, um, chances are good that the heat shrink will be on there because I did it beforehand. So now we will take the wire. You do not want that much sticking out. I had that just for showing people and part of that was from the factory. So you want about an even num amount on either side doesn't have to be very much. Too much and it just ends up increasing the chances that it's not going to work. Those players got a little dull for some reason. My son was cutting something with them. Alright, so now we've got this one and that one together. I like to make sure they're not twisted together. So they're untwisted. And then kind of, I don't know if you can see that there, but I kind of try and wiggle them together into place so they kind of mesh together. You hold one side steady and you kind of twist the other one so that the actual wire itself isn't moving, but the braid, you're tightening the braids inside of the wire there for your connection. So hopefully I have chosen the right size heat shrink. Okay, once you get a little dab of solder on there, it will increase the surface area to the soldering iron and the wire, and then once you get a little dab on the soldering iron, it, it allows more heat to go in quickly. So always tin your ends first a little bit. And then, like I said, you could just give it a little hold with a pair of pliers, over right over top of the section you just did. And then when you slide the heat shrink over top, won't automatically shrink on you. Make sure you have adequate amount on either side. You don't want to make it too small. It should overlap the casing of the wire probably about that much on either side. This is just a demo so I'm not doing that much but if I was doing it for an installation I would make sure it went up at least half an inch from the end of the insulation on the wire about half an inch, centimeter, half an inch, something like that, so that I get a good seal on there and water and moisture and that can't get in. Now, as before, we did the load off of our switch in white, so we are going to continue that theme and do the load from the relay itself in white as well. My handy dandy strippers, these things are beautiful. If you ever want to spend some money, they're not cheap, but these things are amazing. Anyway, back to the job at hand. So, like I said, we trim them off a little bit, make sure they're unfrayed. 
you can do it right too. Uh, I should probably make a note of that, show you that. You don't have to do it that way. You can basically, you set the two pieces of wire. I don't know if you can see that. You kind of cross them so they make an X. Then you hold the one with your finger and your thumb and you twist. And then you twist it back again. And you can get a very nice attachment point there. You can't really see it because this camera's not great at close ups, but it is very well connected. It's not going to come apart once it's soldered doing it this way. I mean, if you were to pull it right now, there's nothing really holding it together. It's just like two pieces of wire wrapped around each other. But once they have a little solder on them, it is a very sturdy connection. So you want to get the soldering iron on there again, and then you start back a bit onto the wire. And once you touch it and the solder sucks in, that's all you need. You can get the heat off of there, and you're golden. I believe they call that wicking. So it is wicking the solder into the all surfaces of the wire inside so you get a very very solid connection. Now, I did have it here. Eat shrink. So again you want to have it on in place if you're wiring it in the dash or in the car and soldering. If you're not, you can slip it on after. Again, I overlapped it on either side. So that's our out. Six. And I'm going to use the white one again. Six is going to go to the switch. So again, that was that twist connection. It's probably my favorite one to use because it's relatively simple and fast, as where the braiding method tends to be a little harder to do, a little messier, but again, it has applications where that's the only way that you can do. So you got to do what works, don't have to be so rigid that you do the same with everything because every application can be slightly different. So I'm just going to use a piece of scrap heat shrink I had kicking around here. get it on there without melting it in place. Another thing, a tip you might want to know is make sure that you don't have any wires sticking out of the connection. So if you have any like uh, pointy ends basically is what I'm saying. If you have anything sticking out towards you that you can feel and pr pricks you or whatever, get that squished down with your pliers before you put your heat shrink on because if you put the heat shrink on and then shrink it down and that wire is there, it'll poke out and eventually it will arc something. It's, it's just inevitable. If anytime you get wires and sharp objects protruding and whatnot, it's going to happen. So, all right. Now, in this situation, I would be putting this on here and about to do that, but because I have no open wire, no open end on it, I have to remember to put the heat shrink on first. So what I'm talking about. You gotta be vigilant with the heat shrink because if not you will make a mistake and then you'll have to go undo it, do it all over again and if you start at end up clipping off wire like that you can end up with being short for your connection or mad and angry because you wasted a bunch of time doing it and frustrated so take that ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Put it on first and then you don't have to worry about it. 
and this that one is done. So now, uh, if you can see that on there, there is the wires are poking out. I can feel them. I can see them. They're going to be a problem. It's not a hard fix, especially once you've tinned them. You can just squish them down, and once you they've been soldered in place, the wires will stay there. So pop that up onto here. And that one's good to go. So the 85 is our ground. That goes to the ground. We have established that. The red goes to the battery. We have established that. Now, we will, in the next step, we will be connecting the relay up to the lights. But for this step, I will show you what we have done. So our black to our black, our red to our red in a second, because I will be needing a fuse in order to make this happen. So one thing about fuse holders is if you do not supply them with fuses, they have this habit of not working very well. So we'll use this one for right now. Funny that your fuse holders need fuses in order to function. One of those must be one of them government money grabs. Anyway, so now we got this going on. Okay, we got our fuse in place got power to that and we will need to power the switch just two, these two together for that okay we've got our black to black power to power we need to ground the relay You can hear it, but okay. So we have power going to the switch, and the relay is working. You can both feel it and hear it when you flick the switch. So that's that. That is your basic setup for wiring in a relay. We have our switch, we have our relay, we have our fusible link. The next step will be doing that into the lights and I will be back in just a minute.